Hey guys, so today we have four new shields to add to the stack and we're going to talk about how to start a meaningful gold collection. So perhaps you are a stacker already, perhaps you are new to stacking, perhaps you have uh, you know, gone more down the collecting route and today we're going to talk about a bit of that. So this is the first shield sovereign. Uh, the four today I have, one is 1861. One is 1881, and then we have an 1879 and an 1880. So we're going to go through those as we uh, as we chat. So we've got some pretty nice condition here. Now I found with collecting the shield sovereigns. Now I'm, you know, part way there on the date. We're not quite finished, but I found that the 1880s, the later years, and most of the 1870s are, you know, fairly rare. I think just by accident I ticked off most of the 60s and uh, there's a few in the 50s that were quite common so I found you know the 40s like the earlier years and the later years for some reason just seem to be the least common so it's hard to get you know really good shield coins at a very low premium um, I have been paying a typical sort of premium for these not especially bargains I wouldn't think but uh, they have been, you know, a little bit cheaper with the recent dip, and uh, you know, good quality coins. I don't mind paying that a little bit extra for. This is the final one, and we're going to talk about how to start a meaningful coin collection. So, when you look at various coins, you know, whether it's sovereigns like these, whether it's anything else you can think of, whether it's old currency coins, you know, there's going to be a multitude of dates available for most of them. And there's going to be many options in terms of what you can pick up and what you can buy. So when we look at uh, collecting, we've got things like the modern collectibles. So, for example, we've got Tudor Beasts here. This is the quarter ounce Lion. We have the quarter ounce Yale. And I think the quarter ounce Bull. So you can obviously pick up the various designs. There's loads of modern collectibles with the various mints, you know, whether you're in Canada whether you're in America, Australia, you know, Perth Mint, etc. There is loads of different options there to go at. If you're more looking at uh, various sizes, then again, all the various mints have different coins in different sizes. Here we have a 20th ounce maple. You can obviously get 10th ounce, a half ounce, quarter ounce, etc. So perhaps you could just choose, you know, a popular coin a kangaroo a britannia or whatever it might be eagles and just look at the different sizes uh, you could look down at a particular theme you know if you're particularly keen on a certain uh, topic or something like that then perhaps you can find uh, a load of dinosaur coins perhaps you can find you know various things that fit your criteria in that sense uh, there is obviously the simple date run so just picking different dates now with sovereigns, there are a lot of dates. So from 1817 up to the present day, although not every year had sovereigns minted, there are obviously proof versions, there are bullion versions and uh, other things in between. So another thing you got with the sovereigns and I know a lot of the US sort of currency coins, you get something called a mint mark. So if you look on here, if it will focus uh, just above the date, it's not quite so obvious, but there is just above the one in the date, there is a mint mark. So this one is an India mint sovereign. I have done other videos where I've showed those a bit closer up. Uh, so that could be an option to look at mint marks. You know, you could get the same year of coin from different years. Uh, there is something called the Whitman's folders, and there might be some others as well, uh, which are useful for those. So you can have a little look. You can fit them into, you know, the, the folders that they have. Uh, you could also, you know, buy your own folder, buy your own boxes, things like that, and, uh, you know, make something from there. Now, this is a modern proof version of the old Sydney Mint Australia Sovereigns, and you'll never guess why they were called that. I'm not super keen on the more modern proof coins in general. Like, I can see the appeal, and there are some stunning ones. You know, I have got a few here and there, but... It just doesn't excite me as much as the older coins. You know, I, I, I got this because it was a very low premium way of getting, well, at the time it was just a cheap bit of bullion, but 
it was a very good way of getting you know a nice uh, sovereign design here something a bit different and uh, yeah I would pick it up again but I would much prefer the old coin you know even though it would be at a slight premium that would be something I would you know really like to do so in terms of uh, other ideas you could go for monarchs so this is obviously King Charles III we have him appearing on some of the more modern coins and uh, you know if you go back in history you've got various kings queens and uh, emperors and presidents things like that depending on where you are and uh, this brings us on to our next one which is the different designs so this is a little bit messy on the bullion coin but the proof coin you know it does look a lot better uh, this is a sovereign which has a different design because it was a 2022 memorial sovereign so a good option if you are you know looking for more modern whoops more modern coins is perhaps looking at the different designs there you know you could pick up 2022 2005 02 12 etc and go from there uh, you might like I say if you do go down the date run you might find that some years are easier some monarchs are easier and some portraits are easier so for example this is a machin portrait there are seven available years and these weren't circulated so you can usually find these in a good condition and also it is you know slightly more modern than things like the georges the edwards but it's not so modern that it looks like this brown coppery thing so still not bad color and uh, again you've got the uh, gillick portrait which is another one there were 10 available years here with this design and again, you can find them pretty easily, pretty readily at, you know, a good premium over spot and in nice condition. So loads of options there. And uh, like I say, if you really want to dive down the mint mark route, uh, George is a good option. There's loads of different mint marks and uh, date variations there. Some are pretty pricey, some pretty rare, but uh, a lot of them are, you know, quite easily accessible. So the basic date run, you know, it shouldn't be too challenging. There are some tough years like 1924, which just don't seem to come up very often at a you know normal bullion premium. But most basic date runs, at least for the other monarchs, you know you could get most of them. Maybe not the shields, but you get most of them at just normal bullion premiums, and so quite an easily accessible option. Now, if you want to find out more about sovereigns in particular, there is a really good book that uh, I've linked in the comments, and that is the Gold Sovereign series by Mr. Marsh and Steve Hill. Um, there are various other ones, you know, if you're interested in particular years of sovereigns. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other one is, but there is a couple specific for Jubilee sovereigns. And then uh, I think it's the red books you can get in America for American coinage. You know, there's tons of different options and resources there to uh, to start with. So yeah, you could do that. You could even look at, you know, even older stuff um, some of the historic coins like the hammered Roman coins, things like that. Not something I know anything about and wouldn't really want to give any advice on that, but something you can look into if you're more interested in history. And uh, I didn't mention world gold. So you've got like the Latin Monetary Union coins, which is like your old 20 francs and things like that. So they were quite a standard uh, size over a period of time in history. And they're quite popular. You know, you can pick up a lot of them. Some may be restrikes, but you can pick up a lot of them that were circulated around Europe um, at relatively low premiums. And again, you can pick up, like say, the modern restrikes, which they look historic, but they're still going to be nice condition and pretty easy to pick up at a low premium. So even if you are, you know, more of a stacker at heart, there is quite a lot of options for you there to get a bit of an interesting collection without going crazy on premiums. So I'm curious if I missed anything and also let me know, are you a stacker that is, you know, diverting over to collecting? And if not, what are you collecting? Have you got your eyes on anything in particular? Is there a date run you're working on or something like that? I'd love to know. So we'll talk soon.